the Buddhist teaching can be called a serious pursuit of true happiness. And remind yourself of that every time you sit. This is why we have the chant for metta, or goodwill, at the end of the chanting session before we sit down and meditate, to remind ourselves that we really do wish for happiness, a true happiness. I mean, everyone wishes for happiness, but it's when you look at the way people go about looking for happiness in their lives, you wonder exactly how much really serious thought they give to what they're doing. Because true happiness it has to be something that doesn't change, that doesn't depend on conditions. Which means you can't look in ordinary places for it. You have to look in an extraordinary place, which is your awareness of the present moment. Something that's right here all the time, and yet something we overlook. So when we're meditating, we're turning inward to look for true happiness right here. and to see what we've been overlooking for so long. And we remind ourselves each time of our main intention, which is to find that happiness, a happiness that is good not only for us, but for the people around us. Because we find that when we're not creating unnecessary suffering for ourselves, it's lifting a burden not only off of our shoulders, but also the shoulders of the people around us. So we wish not only for our own happiness, but for the happiness of all living beings. And the reason we have to remind ourselves of this is because in the course of focusing on the breath, focusing on the present moment, all kinds of thoughts are going to come up to pull us away. And unless we're clear about why we're here, we're not going to stay here. We're going to go running off someplace else. And at the same time, thoughts of goodwill are good, comfortable thoughts to think. It feels good to remind yourself that, yes, you really do want a true happiness. You really do want living beings to be happy without being picky about this person or that person. You want to be generous with your goodwill. By creating that, that kind of attitude, you create a good space to settle down in the present moment. Because even though our, ultimately our point in meditation is to focus directly on the awareness of the present, it's a difficult place to focus. So we give ourselves crutches to get there, things that help. The breath is one of these. In addition to thoughts of goodwill, then we focus on the breath. The breath is coming in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. That's all you have to be aware of right now. The other things, the mice crawling around the ceiling, the sounds off in the distance, just let them be. All you're responsible for is this awareness of the breath coming in and going out. If you want, you can use a meditation word to go along with it. Traditionally, they use the word butto, which means awake. Both within breath, to or the out, but to, but to, or just in, out, whatever word feels comfortable for you to help help you stay with the breath. And then you can focus on how the breathing feels. This is one very immediate, visceral way of showing goodwill for yourself. There's no need to breathe in an uncomfortable way. And yet, because we pay so little attention to the breathing, we usually leave it to its own devices. And as a result, the breath gets more shaped not, shaped not so much by our awareness, but by other emotions that come to the mind. It gets shaped by our unexamined thoughts about exactly how breathing happens. And so as a result, many times the breath gets constricted. It, parts of the body don't seem to be participating in the breathing process, because ideally the breathing process should be a whole body process. Your whole nervous system, system should be involved. So in order to have that happen, you need to give the breathing your full awareness. And try to notice what kind of rhythm feels good right now. Long breathing, short breathing, deep, shallow, fast, slow. There are all kinds of variations to the breath. 
and you've got a whole hour to test them out to see what rhythm feels best right now. What texture to the breathing feels best right now. If you're feeling tired, you want a, a rhythm of breathing gives you more energy. If you're feeling tense, you want a rhythm that helps you to relax. In the beginning, you can focus on any part of the body that feels comfortable to stay focused on, feels easy to stay focused on, and where you can keep track of the breath. Try to create a nice, relaxed feeling tone right there. Because normally when we're focusing on something, we have a, ten a tendency to tense it up, which is not what we want right now. We want that to be focused on a sense of relaxation, a sense of ease, a sense of openness. The energy in the body should be allowed to flow naturally in, flow naturally out. And then when you've got one spot on the body that you can maintain that feeling tone in, then you can allow the same feeling tone to spread to other parts of the body. So as you breathe in, there's nothing in the body that gets tensed up. As you breathe out, you're not holding on to tension in any part of the body. You can go through the body systematically. Start around the navel and just go up the front section by section. Watch each section for a couple of minutes as you breathe in, breathe out, and feel, notice what kind of rhythm feels good for that part of the body. If you feel any sense of tension or tightness there, it'll allow it to relax. And then you move up to the next section, say the solar plexus, and then the middle of the chest, the base of the throat, the head, down the back, out the legs. Starting again at the back of the neck, going down the shoulders, out the arms, until you've covered the whole body. And go through the body this way as many times as you like. And you find that all different kinds of benefits come. The immediate one is a, a greater sense of well-being in the present moment. It just feels better to sit here. When you are sensitive to how the breathing is going and sensitive to how you can change it to make it feel even better. Each time you go through the body, you find you get more and more sensitive to parts that you may have been holding a subconscious tension for a long period of time. You finally allow it to relax, let go. You find it easier and easier to inhabit your body in the present. When the body in the present is more comfortable, the mind feels more inclined to stay here. So the benefits are not only physical, they're also mental. A sense of ease, a sense of well-being. The mind goes more and more still. At the same time, though, it's more alert and more aware. Our tendency when things get comfortable in the body is to fall asleep. But here we're doing it mindfully, with as much alertness as we can muster. So it creates a different quality to the awareness, a different quality to our awareness of the body. So it feels both still and energized. Then the next trick, once you're able to do this, is to learn how to maintain it. Because all too often the mind says, well, been there, done that, what's next? But this is the sort of place that if you really want to get to know it, you have to stay here a long period of time. You have to become familiar. You have to become friends with the body. The kind of friend that sticks with a friend no matter what happens the kind of friend that you would like to trust. You know, you try to be that kind of friend with your body, and you find that the breath in the body re reciprocates. It becomes a good place to be, a nice place to stay. But there is a separate skill to one, learning how to do it, and then two, learning how to stay here. The thoughts will come up, well, this is boring, what's next? Well, say, no, who's bored? Who's saying that? Start questioning those thoughts. Don't believe everything that comes through your head. Don't believe everything you think. Just see the, see the thought as a kind of like an energy pattern that comes and goes. And you don't have to give it any more reality than that. You don't have to give it any more credence than that. Learn 
to be on the lookout for any kind of thought that pushes you away from the present moment. And instead of getting entangled with it, just allow it to dissolve while you stay with the breath. And you begin to see that you can start anticipating when a thought is going to come. You feel it as a stirring or disturbance in the energy field of the body. And just allow that sense of disturbance to relax, allow it to iron itself out, and the thought will get aborted. So you don't have to engage every thought that comes into the mind in a conversation. You just take it apart before it forms. And that makes it a lot easier to stay here long periods of time. And as you stay here longer and longer, the one, the mind gets stronger. Your awareness of the present moment gets stronger. The sense of well-being in the body gets stronger, goes deeper. And you start seeing and understanding patterns of the mind that you never saw or understood before. This is where the practice starts giving rise to insight. We actually start using the meditation. John Fu, my teacher, once said there are three steps to meditation. One is learning how to do it, in other words, how to get the mind to settle down. The second one is learning how to maintain it, how to keep it there. Third is learning how to put it to use. What good is a centered, centered mind? this state of well-being, the state of centeredness that we've got here. Well, in addition to giving a sense of well-being in the body, it helps you to understand what's going on in the mind and how to, learning how to sidestep a lot of the emotions that used to take over. You see them as a process that arises and falls away within this larger f field of awareness that you're developing, so they don't sneak up on you from behind, take, take over your awareness. You see them as they come, and you have a sense of which thoughts are worth thinking, which ones are not. You can disarm the thoughts that are not helpful and engage only the ones that really are worth thinking about. And you get a quicker and quicker sense of which thoughts are skillful and which ones are not, which ones will lead to happiness and which ones will lead to, to suffering. And you can start undercutting the ones that lead to suffering, step by step by step. So you more in control of the mind. And see exactly where it's getting in the way of the happiness that you're trying to find here in the present moment. And you begin to realize that the big problem is not things that come from outside. It's what the mind does to itself, the, way, the ways it forces itself to think, the ways it ties itself down to ideas and attitudes that cause stress, suffering, and pain. And that when you stop getting engaged in those patterns, you You find a sense of happiness, a sense of well-being that lies deeper still, even deeper than the sense of concentration. And this gets you closer and closer to the kind of happiness that the Buddha was talking about, a happiness that doesn't depend on conditions. There will come a point in the meditation where things open up, where at that point you're not doing anything more, it's just something allowing these things to open up on their own. And you finally reach a dimension in the mind that, as the Buddha said, is not conditioned. It doesn't depend on anything at all. And that's where the true happiness lies. So this process here is one of digging in, looking for gold. And when you find things that are obviously not gold, you throw them away. When things look like gold, you have to test them, because there is fool's gold, you know. But the basic test is this. Is it something that's constant or inconstant? If it's going to be inconstant, you know that it's going to be stressful, nothing you want to identify with. No matter how much you've cherished a particular type of thinking or a sense of your own identity, you begin to realize that those thoughts get in the way. So use this test for gold to check everything out. And as you run into things that are fool's gold, and you put them aside. More things that are fool's gold, put them aside. And as you put them aside, opens things up. There's less getting in the way. 
So the genuine gold is there. It's just a question of not being willing to settle for anything less. <laughs>